In this video, I'm going to finish up our discussion on the WKB approximation. And so if you remember in the previous video, uh, or the previous two videos, we looked at where we have the, uh, the potential less than the energy of the particle and the potential greater than the energy of the particle. And so we can think of a potential that looks, uh, that looks like uh, that looks like this. So say we have something that looks like this. And so we have a particle coming in and it has a wave function. And then here it will decay and become smaller over here. And so we are looking at with this one. Uh, so we are looking at where the potential is less than the energy of the particle. And then here we are looking at where the potential is greater than the energy of the particle. And so here we have we got these two solutions so this one applies to these places here where the uh, energy of the particle is greater than the potential and then this one here applies to that part right there where the potential energy is greater than the energy of the particle and so those are the two solutions we got but now we have to look at where the energy uh, of the particle and the uh, potential energy cross over each other. And so that is what we will call the patching region. Uh, we call it the patching region because this is where we have to sort of patch these two solutions together. And so this is where the uh, potential energy is roughly equal to the energy of the particle. So I have here in blue, that's the energy of the particle. And then here in red is our potential energy. And so we're interested in that point right there and sort of this uh, region around it that we're calling the patching region. Uh, and so here, we'll for the uh, wave function, it'll go to infinity for both of these uh, for both of these WKB solutions right here. So we need to patch the two solutions together. And so to do this in the patching region at the turning point, we can assume uh, that we have this here. So it's our energy plus uh, the uh, potential or the change in potential here uh, with the change in X. And we can assume that this is linear. And so we have this green right here, which is showing us that in this patching region right here, that this is roughly linear right here. And so we have our Schrodinger equation here. And so this is the, uh, the potential energy here. So we're setting that equal to this stuff right here. And so this is our Schrodinger equation. And so we go through some uh, algebraic manipulations and we end up with this right here. And then we just make this substitution. So we put alpha in for uh, the one third power of this. And so we end up with alpha cubed right here. And so then we can just divide both sides by alpha squared and we end up with this right here. And then we will make some substitutions. So this alpha x here will become z, this uh, alpha dx here will become dz. And so we end up with dz squared because these are squared and then this z uh, right here. And so uh, this is in the form of something called the airy differential equation. So uh, this is, uh, as we've seen in previous videos, a common thing in quantum mechanics is to make a bunch of substitutions to try and get things into a form uh, a, a form of differential equation for which we have solutions for. And so that's, uh, that is what we have done here. And so one of the solutions is this. Uh, so this integral right here, and this will look somewhat like this. Again, this is an illustration. This isn't the actual function, but it will look something like this, where we have uh, this sort of uh, this sort of. Uh, higher frequency over here, then when we get towards uh, our 
our potential right there uh, is sort of uh, spaces out the the frequency reduces and this would actually be more like something like this so it's an exponential decay right there going on right there and so the other solution is this right here and so this uh, so this one has the cosine here in the integral this has the sine and it has this exponential right here and it'll look something like this uh, so once again this uh, will actually be more like an exponential growth right there after we get to that potential and so these are the asymptotic forms right here so for z greater than zero and z less than zero these are the asymptotic forms of these solutions right here uh, and so the patching wave function is then a linear combination of the two, uh, the two solutions. So this is our B solution here. This is our A solution right here. And so it's a linear combination of those two. All right, so then we have these, uh, within this patching region, we have these overlap regions. So the overlap regions are where the linearized potential is reasonably accurate. Uh, so uh, this is the patching wave function. So our patching wave function is reasonably accurate. Yet they're far enough away from the turning point. So they're far enough away from that uh, that the WKB approximation, uh, so that's the uh, the energy of the particle being greater than the potential uh, on one side, so right here, and then less than the potential on the other side, so this side right here is also reliable. So in the overlap regions, we can use this that we uh, used above, so this that the potential is equal to the energy plus the change in the potential uh, with the change in x times x here. And so we uh, with our so we had our WKB approximation from the previous videos, which was this that the momentum is equal to this 2m times e minus the potential here uh, both under this square root and so we have our e here and then for this potential here we are putting this in right here and so that's what we have right here and then so we do a few uh a few algebraic manipulations here and we end up with this right here and so recall that we set the alpha here equal to all of to all of this, and so we can get this uh, this dv at zero dx, uh, and set that equal to this alpha cubed h bar squared over two m right here. And so we end up with this, which after we do some simplifying, we end up with this right here. And so our momentum is equal to this h bar alpha to the 3 over 2 power than the square root of negative x there. So in region 2 where our x is positive, so that will be uh, sort of on this side of the, uh, of the turning point right there. So we have that the, uh, the integral of our momentum here is equal to this uh, h bar a alpha to the three halves power here. So that's this. The uh, square root of negative x has to go into our integral there. And so we end up with this right here. And so uh, this gives our, uh, our WKB wave function uh, as this. So after we put that in, we end up with this right here. And uh, our patching wave function uh, and our patching wave function becomes for, uh, so we're using this asymptotic form here. Uh, so we end up with this as our solution for the patching wave function on the uh, x is positive side of our turning point. And so we put b equal to zero because we want the, uh, the exponential decay here, not this uh, exponential growth here. And we set that equal to this, uh, this right here. Uh, 
to this uh, one with the D right here, and we set that equal to the one with the A, which is what we got right here. We set that equal, we do some algebraic manipulations, and we end up with A being equal to this uh, square root of 4 pi over H bar alpha times D. Then so we do the same thing for region one, which is where X is less than zero. So on the left side of the turning point, so we end up with uh, with these right here. And so we make the substitution for our uh, that for what we just found up here into these. So this a and this negative a get substituted for this for this right here. And so we put those in, uh, we do some simplifying uh, and we uh, make this simplification right here. And so we end up with uh, the C plus here being equal to this and then the C minus being equal to this. So this has the negative here, then positive exponent. This has positive here and then the negative exponent. And these are the connection formulae, which join the WKB solutions on both sides of the turning point. So uh, we have the uh, sort of positive right here on the positive side of the turning point, and then the negative side of the turning point right there. So if we set these connection formulae in terms of D, then shift the origin from the turning point to an arbitrary space X2. So up here, we have our turning point right here. We have this sort of defined here as being zero, so that uh, to the left is negative X, and to the right is positive X. But we can shift that point sort of anywhere that we want. Uh, and so to some, you know, X sub two, uh, arbitrary point, uh, we get the following wave functions. And so these are the wave functions within that uh, uh, in that patching region. So this is for below the patching region and this is for above the patching region. And so uh, remember we have uh, we have the potential going right there and the uh, wave function is sort of going like this. And so we have the turning point right here. And so we are going to be using this one here with the blue uh, on this side of the turning point within the patching region. So we're still within the patching region. Uh, and then the red one on the left side here of the turning point within the patching region. And these will then line up with the wave function sort of beyond that patching region there. And so that is... Uh, that is the uh, patching that we can do using this WKB approximation. So yeah, uh, the, the blue on here and the red on here are just to show what's sort of different about these two solutions here where this has the two and it's the sign where this is the uh, exponential and it has the negative here. Uh, this goes X to X2 and this X2 to X. Uh, and so, uh, so this has the plus pi over four. And so, uh, you know, sometimes looking at these sort of large uh, formulae like this, you know, there's sort of a, a difficulty in distinguishing what's different about them. So I just put the different colors in there to distinguish what's different about those. Uh, but anyway, that is how we patch those together uh, for the WKB approximation. Uh, and so that was everything I was going to talk about with the WKB approximation. Uh, but anyway, I hope you found this video helpful, and I will see you in the next one.